Oh boy, we've gotten to this point, huh? Well, hear me out. Obligatory disclaimer. This is a Mally Minute, not an essay video. Which means you get my 5am brain thoughts and opinions, not peer-reviewed research. Which in turn means welcome to the corner of anecdote, personal experience, and My source is that I made it up. Maybe one day I'll make a proper video on this topic, but for now you get shower thoughts with an idiot. Enjoy! There's been a lot of talk recently about AI. And I'm not exempt from that. I've spent my fair amount of time shaking my fist at the sky and laughing at charlatans that see AI as nothing more than a means of exploiting or replacing other human beings. But there is a form of AI that thus far I've not seen given much scrutiny or disdain, at least on my corner of the internet. Most of the focus so far has been on art AI, with the occasional stirrings of text AI specific to script and industry uses. Side note, stand with the Writers Guild. But there's another form of AI that's quite similar to text generation for scripting purposes that's rather pervasive and have only gotten more widespread over the years. Social AI, or character AI, or glorified sex bots. Call it whatever you like, it's no secret that AI in the form of socialising and assistance has been everywhere over the past couple of years. From automated therapy, to assistant bots like Siri and Google Maps, and more relevant to our discussion today, artificial emotional connection bots. I don't know what the fuck to call these. Companion bots! Again, the glorified sex bots, insert Detroit Become Human Stacy joke here, I'm- there's no way to talk about this without getting demonetized. All of that to say, character AI. It's also no secret that much of these AI apps and programs in the past have been used for... Yes, that. I'm not gonna dissect the moral, ethical implications behind getting your jollies off with an AI. To be perfectly frank, as far as sexual outlets go, I think it's one of the better ones. But just like porn of generations gone by, while on a surface level I think it's perfectly acceptable as an outlet, there still remain hidden pitfalls. It's been well documented that the sex industry is rife with abuse, unwilling participants, and unethical production and distribution, as well as an equally long and sordid history of the mental health impacts some of this content or overexposure can result in. Not to mention how with the advent of the internet, now more than ever, children children are able to access this content, some of which even adults shouldn't be seeing. And these same problems follow over into the current day with a rapidly developing generation that those charged with protecting and overseeing are either woefully unprepared for, purposely ignorant, or at worst, actively profiting off of. AI social bots have a different, albeit similar pitfalls. In some ways it removes many of the horrific dangers of adult content. There are no actors or actresses that can be abused or mistreated, unless you believe the AI bot itself can be abused, but that is a topic for another day. However, the same can be said of adult content like all of that Overwatch porn, where the only people being abused are the animators and my eyes. And trust me, the animators are used to it. They probably get paid better making than all at the very least, but I digress. Again, a different topic for a different day. We can complain about the animation industry later. My point is that AI removes the human potential for mistreatment, so that should be considered a net positive right? However, you see the title, the thumbnail. Can AI abuse you? Can someone be groomed by AI? In my zero PhD holding opinion, yes. Well, sort of. Let me, let me try to explain this. See, an AI lacks the intent to predate, true, but it's sort of a sponge for the worst and most depraved parts of people. Now, let me preface this by saying, Godspeed, you horny heathens. If you're an adult and the bot hasn't yet developed sentience, then there's really no reason to judge it. However, with systems like Character AI, I don't know if the beta is part of the title, I don't care, which are taught through many different interactions, it becomes a bit trickier. See, the bot just goes off what it's given the most positive or repeated feedback for, which means you can be talking to one of these little artificial guys with no sexual intentions behind it and still end up being hit with unexpected sexual or romantic material out of the blue, simply because that's what the bot has been fed the most. It's following patterns, it's not actually thinking about it in the way that a human might, it's just going with what it has been told multiple times over is the path that it should take and the way that it should respond. Which, okay, awkward and a bit annoying if that's not your goal, but manageable. But then there comes the less mild desires. Anything from non-con to incest to pe- Believe it, crop up in these bots, plus racism. Because always. Because why wouldn't there be fuck- now, get back on script. You can, you can complain about that later. <laughs> you can, there's, oh god, there's so much to unpack here, but I digress. We don't have the time to break down all the potential moral implications and ethics of using these bots to explore such content. That's a whole other can of worms. We're not only sealing, but shooting from a cannon into the sun today. I'm Australian, I can always go and pluck it out of the sun later. For today, I just want you to be aware that these are, in fact, themes and topics that crop up in these bots. Now, the bot itself is like a stupid dog. If you chide it and kick it for bringing up something that you don't want it to, it's not going to know why one of its users recoils in horror and another gets all hot and bothered. It's just a poor little robot, please be merciful to it. The bot also doesn't know who it's presenting these topics to. Female, male, straight, gay, adult, child. 
What I'm trying to say is that the bot has no agency or accountability here, only the creators and those that already use it. And even then, because it's kind of a group project, it's kind of weird to phrase it like that, but that's what I'm going with because everyone's feeding it information and there's not one sole creator behind it at that point. It, it's, it's like a fucking amalgamation of everyone's weird kinks. I, get back on script, Mel. Just get back on script. What I'm trying to say is that it's not malicious in the same way a human groomer would be. It doesn't have the same intent. But the effect can still end up being the same, be it morbid curiosity or desensitization over time, if someone is exposed to these prompting replies from the bot long enough, there's a good to high chance they'll allow it to play out. Welcome children to the rabbit hole. As someone who's more experienced with traditional online grooming, there's a sentence, a lot of it had to do with desensitization through gentle and consistent exposure over time. Normalization in short. Something that all groomers have on their side is shame and secrecy. Because we're all severely repressed horny little apes, when it comes to the bedroom activities, we tend to keep things close to our chest, which for fully informed consenting adults is fine, but for a child being exposed to things they shouldn't be? Well, it quickly becomes an echo chamber of sorts. If the only person, or in this instance, bot, I guess, is acting as though these not safe for work topics are completely natural and there's no outside influence there to catch it, well, odds are the kids are gonna internalize that. Pontus Brocker actually talked about this a lot in her coverage of the Sappho situation, and how minors can be groomed into believing things like BLIC and CP are actually natural and acceptable. TLDR, kids are mush-brained and very easily molded into different shapes. All that to say, kids really should not be allowed access to these programs in general. I'm sorry kids, I know you hate it when I say that you can't have something, but you can't have this. You just sit down, play with Lego blocks, get bindies in the soles of your feet, don't come back until there's bats in the sky, get the fuck off X. <laughs> but what about adults? Well, I think it's still worth considering desensitization to dark material when it comes to adults as well. Again, a good example of this if you want to hear more would be from Lazy Bedhead when she covered Plague Moth recently, and the discussion of the gradual desensitization to gore and human suffering. A slightly different beast to be sure, but the same concept still applies. Hell, just to throw another example on the table, uh, Ponda Streamline Workshop and I recently had a discussion on stream about the morality of aging up fictional characters, which you can find on Stream's channel, Eventually. She'll get to it. I don't know when, but she'll get to it. In that conversation, we veered into the topic of violence in media and desensitization. It wasn't completely the point of that stream, but it was certainly something worth discussing more in detail at a later date, and interesting to talk about in the meantime. Now here is the part where I tend to differ from my peers when discussing this. I don't think the fault lies with the media, or in this instance, the bot. At the end of the day, as adults, it's our job to check ourselves and see what consumption of certain media is doing to our heads. I think it's a disservice to ourselves and creative expression to react to the impact of dark media by trying to scrub or sanitize it. After all, at the end of the day, we are a very dark species and to pretend otherwise is to hide the danger beneath a facade of sunny smiles. A good explanation I use when talking about this is that there's no more or less violence in the world today than there was a hundred years ago, although the means of that violence has changed. I'm just saying, bashing someone over the head with a rock a couple hundred years ago is very different to having an AK, but the means of delivery of that violence may change, but the core violence is the same. I hope that makes sense. But sometimes people seem to think that as a species we've become more violent over time, and that's just not true. The only real difference is that we've moved from things like print media to the internet, and from missing pictures on milk cartons to amber alerts sent directly to people's pockets. We're more connected now, and information travels more quickly. Things that never would have been told to us before in the past, everyone now knows. It does make the world seem horrendous, but it's the difference between blissful ignorance and horrified informed. Is that it? Blissful ignorance? Horrified informed? I don't fucking know. Someone more clever than I come up with something in the comments. Thank you. Knowledge and openness. Those are the things that protect us. Not hiding behind our hands and occasionally peeking through the gaps to glimpse the horror that lies beyond. So, can a bot groom you? Can a bot guide you down a depraved rabbit hole? Yes, absolutely. Can you still enjoy those bots? For horny or not horny reasons, I don't judge. Safely. Also yes. Just make sure to occasionally step back and take stock of the influence of repeated or prolonged exposure to, well, anything actually might be causing to you. The solution to these things isn't shame or silence or blame. It certainly isn't fear mongering technology because if we go there, we've just, we've missed the point. The point has flown over our heads and now we've gone straight back to pearl clutching. Wonderful, it doesn't help. Sorry, again, topic, another day. Stay on point, Mal. The solution isn't to encourage people into the echo chambers, but to allow open discussion about those things. Sometimes the best way to cut a predator off before it can get its teeth into someone is just to defang it. Even if that predator is a very confused little AI bot trying to entertain the end user in the best way that it knows how. 
For real, I feel bad for this little bot. They don't know they're being creepy and inappropriate, the poor Babs. Am I personifying an amalgamation of code and cringy RPs? Yes. Am I going to stop? You can take this weird little personified AI bot from my cold dead hands. Anyway, thank you for coming to my unhinged TED talk today. For other unhinged TED talks, please refer to my Mally Minutes playlist. This is where I keep my unlisted videos or, you know, the hidden trash. Uh, this video will also eventually be unlisted as well. I don't know when, but eventually it shall be cast into the Shadow Realm. And with that, I want to give a huge shout out to the patrons who just enable me. Thank you for enabling my absolute garbage. I'll get you better content one day, I promise. She's lying to you. She's not a commentator. They only know how to lie. You're never getting better content. This is the best you get. Be get fucked. Bye. <laughs> God, I'm just, I'm not a good content creator, eh?